You go ahead. You go ahead. Make your move. Get your halter, do whatever you want. Woo now. Woo now. Woo now. Woo now. Woo. Easy now. He's used to the people, he's used to the saddle, but he's not used to the weight of a rider on his back. Do it, son. Do it, son. Be a nice boy. Be a nice boy. Easy now. Easy now. Then you make your move. You go for it. Hey, there you are. All right. Monty had done it. In less than three days, he'd achieved what many thought was impossible. That's a tense time, isn't it? It's wonderful. Are you kidding me? It's wonderful. You, you know you can do it, but it isn't until it happens, you know? Just walking right on around, right and left. That's good. That's good. It's just the most wonderful feeling you could ever have. I'm really happy. Isn't it remarkable that this was a frightened wild animal? Look at it now. Wonderful. Look how much has been accomplished. And it's been done without injuring the animal, uh, without uh, brutality. It's been done by gentle psychological means. Monty's dream had come true. He'd proved that by talking to it in its own language, even the wildest of horses will learn to respond. It's been said by good horsemen that if learning is one to ten, the most important part of learning is zero to one. It's the same with children, I believe. If children can hear positive things about tiny little improvements, they respond very favorably. At his farm in California, Monty's theories about horses have been applied to raising children. He and his wife, Pat, have three children of their own and dozens of foster children. We had 47 foster children. Almost all of them came to us at 11, 12, and 13 years of age, which is long after life's patterns have already been deeply set in. Steve Arlano is now a successful businessman living in California. But as a young teenager in San Francisco, he was becoming rather wild. Steve Arlano came to me at uh, about 15 years of age. He was on a course to have uh, some real problems in his life. And I'd like to think that the time that he spent with me put him on a positive course. Um, I guess he would be the final judge as to whether that was the case or not. We did some pretty uh, silly things. I was in fights on a regular basis. And we lived near the uh, University of San Francisco. And we broke into buildings to play pinball. One particular time, the San Francisco police came in and were chasing us. And my father stepped out of the apartment and heard the officer say, stop or I'll shoot. Monty believes that the way he dealt with these problems was similar to the techniques he uses with his horses. I wasn't until a few years ago he, he, he had told me that, well, I use that technique on you. At the time, I didn't know what te technique he was talking about. The psychology isn't any different in its basic principles. You don't put a child in a round pen and send him away by flicking a line at him. But in human terms, you do the same thing, putting them to work when they're negative and giving them great positive consequences when they're positive. Any little thing, find that thing that he can do positive and reward him for it. It may seem very unimportant to you, but it may be the most important thing that, that in that child's life because it may be the first step in the right direction. If he pushed me away, I certainly didn't think anything poorly of it. And when he pulled me back in, I just enjoyed that. I think he brought us in because he wanted to help kids. And he didn't do it yelling, screaming, or any way. Just let me know what was what taught me wrong from right. 
Bill Terry came to me, a very aggressive sort of a kid. First thing he did was come up to me and say, hey, Turkey, what do you want? I said, what I want is that from this day forward, you will call me Mr. Roberts, and uh, you will not be disrespectful at all. That's what I want. Well, you're not going to get that. You know. Yeah, I probably am going to get that. But, Billy, I'm going to work to get you to want to give me that, rather than to tell you you have to give me that. So you call me whatever you want. I was cocky. <laughs> Uh, I was very outgoing. And I went to work on him on this very principle that we've been discussing. He got negative consequences for negative actions. And he spent some time digging ditches and scrubbing toilets to the point where he'd stand up in your face and say he's not going to do it, you know. And then you'd list the further negatives that that would get him. Bill Cherry was training to be a jockey and one of his jobs was to exercise horses every day. Sometimes it didn't feel like riding all the horses. <laughs> and I remember one day, uh, I think I had about 10 mounts. And uh, when we ride the horses, we used to mark it off on a sheet. Well, I think I only rode about eight, but still marked off 10. And um, went home, took a shower, and Monty approached me and says, how was the ride today? I said, good. He goes, did you ride all your horses? I said, yeah. He goes. Why are you lying to me? I got caught. He says, I want you here after school. I want you to ride the horses. Um, so that taught me never to do that again, to cheat. He spent some really tough time uh, paying the price for negative consequences. And it was five days until he walked up to me, stuck his hand out and said, Mr. Roberts, Anyway, uh, he said, uh, Mr. Roberts, and from that point forward, I was either Dad, Pops, or Mr. Roberts. Got a wonderful family now. Happened to Billy Cherry in the end is the most incredible, positive story you can tell. Today, Monty still trains race horses on his farm, but since 1989, his life has changed immensely. It was then that the Queen invited him to Windsor Castle to demonstrate his techniques. As a result, Monty's become known internationally, especially in the world of horse racing. One of Monty's ideas can help at the start of races. Most horses enter the starting stalls easily, but some resist intensely. Monty believes there's a good reason for this. It's related to the way they've evolved to defend themselves from predators. Horses are into pressure animals, no question about it. Unlike human beings, if we touch a hot stove, we'll pull away from it. But when the horse feels pressure, they will bring their head or their body toward it like that. Now, in case you thought that was an accident, I'll do it one more time for you. Horses are into pressure animals. If I do it on this side, you'll see that she'll bring her head this way and come into the pressure. The reason they're into pressure, in my opinion, is that nature has dictated that when they're attacked in their vulnerable areas, they shouldn't just rip away and tear the skin. They should go into their attacker, into their attacker, and then fight him off. Inside the starting stall itself, what you can't see there's a ledge that goes along for the jockey to put his feet on and to protect his feet from the horse's sides. And it's badly designed. The ledge in the starting stall is confronted by the flank of the horse. They come into it like this. You see? Into it. You see? So many people in the horse industry will think that the solution to this is to force the horse. And that's not the answer at all. It's already frightened. Monty thinks a blanket is a better solution. It's left behind in the stalls as the race starts. The blanket goes just behind the saddle and comes down here and protects this whole rear flank area with heavy padding and leather across there so that they don't actually feel the rail coming through. It dulls off this feeling that they're being attacked as if they were being gnawed on by a predator. You can take horses that are absolutely without solution and uh, put that on, and in a matter of hours, 
they're perfectly tranquil. Well, here we are at the flag is up. Monty's fame is not limited to the horse racing world. It's even extended to the corporate world, where his ideas have been useful in management training. Okay. Thank you for having us. Welcome. Okay, hi there. Come on in. One feature of the demonstrations that Monty gives is that occasionally some women in the audience faint. This light line to throw it out so that if it should hit him, it can't cause him any pain like that. It's, as light as it's ranging now in demonstration form about one fainting for each 12 demonstrations. That's just the name that I started calling him. I had five ladies faint in the one demonstration. And I predicted in my own mind before the demonstration that this one could get uh, a fainting because it was an abused horse. I showed them how she feared being struck, showed them how she feared being kicked. And then I put her through my uh, procedure and she came round beautifully and she just was so appreciative of someone treating her fairly that when she came up and joined up with me I heard kaboom over here and I saw some people looking down and the next thing I know there were people looking down over here and then over there I've spoken I suppose with 90 percent of them and virtually every single one uh, has been abused most of them are not uh, traumatized by what they saw. It's a moving experience. No teachers. They throw their arms around me and they tell me you can help human beings with this. Uh, don't quit. And they tell me that they adore what I'm doing and you know, things like that. But it, that's not important because it, it isn't me. It is not me. I didn't create anything at all. I only discovered what nature already had in place. Thank you, very much. you were a great audience. Hello, little shy boy. You're not so shy now, are you? Huh? You're not so shy now. You're doing good. I knew it was going to happen 24 hours into it, but you never know for sure. Wow. Okay. Well done. Oh. They said it couldn't be done, but you did it. Thank you. Yeah. Now that I've seen it, made a believer out of me. You knew it all along, and I should have listened to you a little closer. Well, I probably will from now on. They can put a man in the moon, they play. He can break a Mustang. Uh, I guess so, if that's what you yeah. say. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> you ready for some dinner? I'm ready for I'll some barbecue. Every demonstration that I do will be done with a new knowledge within myself that those skeptics out there have to know now. They're going to see it. And they're not going to say to me, well, of course you know, you say about these Mustangs and that they're so wild and everything, but come on, you know, I mean, I saw this one and it was a fluke. This was, a, anybody could have done this. I'm just going to smile now because the evidence is there. You go for it. That's a tense time, isn't it?